Hello students. Today we are going to extend the concept of Raoult's law to non-volatile solutes. That means solutes which do not turn into the vapor state. For immediate recall, we first go back to the Raoult's law initial which says that when you have a mixture of two volatile components, the vapor pressure of each component is equal to its mole fraction in the solution multiplied by the vapor pressure of the component in the pure state. So we have Pa is Xa into Pa0. Yeah? We are talking about the binary solution A and B where both A and B are turning into the vapor state. Hence, the total vapor pressure in this binary mixture would be the sum of the vapor pressure of each of the individual components that is Xa into Pa0 plus Xb into Pb0. What if one of the component decides not to vaporize? So, what happens over here is the component says I am not going to turn into the vapor state. So, what we have is such a component denoted by the black dot still stays on the surface of the liquid mixture but does not convert itself into the vapor state like the red dots do. So here my red component is volatile and black is non-volatile. Now this red and white black doesn't mean that a red liquid will vaporize while a black will not. It's just for clarity. So in other words, what I have is in the vapor state, I will have only the red dots turning into the vapor state. So the pressure due to the black dots becomes null or zero. We have over here Pa is Xa into Pa0 while Pb that is our red dots becomes zero. Hence, the total vapor pressure in such a liquid mixture would be only due to particles of A. But we also need to understand that on the surface we don't have only the particles of A, we do have B as well. So the total vapor pressure will be, is happening only due to A, but it will be lower than that of pure A. because a is only some fraction of this, these particles. So we have P, A, P total is Xa into Pa0. Now, how do we convert this into our knowledge of solute and solvent? Because that is where you have to apply this uh, concept. So let us say a is my volatile solvent whereas B is my non-volatile solute in this mixture. So let's suppose we have salt water. So salt is my solute and water is my solvent over here. Xa plus Xb is 1. In other words, the sum of mole fractions in a binary mixture is 1. I can replace A by the mole fraction of B. So, P total is 1 minus Xb into Pa0. You must be wondering why we are doing this. Why are we complicating all this simple equation that we have got? We shall come to this point later on. So, we have P total is multiplying Pa0 minus Pa0 into Xb. Pa0 into Xb is Pa0 minus P total. So I have the mole fraction of the solute in the solution is Pa0 that is the vapor pressure of pure A minus the vapor pressure of the solution divided by the vapor pressure of pure A. First of all this equation tells you that the total vapor pressure in this kind of a binary mixture where we have a non-volatile solute is lower than the vapor pressure of the solvent in the pure state. One. So this is my lowering of vapor pressure. When I divide it by the vapor pressure of pure A, that means this is the lowering of vapor pressure with respect to the vapor pressure of pure A. So that is we term it as relative lowering of vapor pressure. Xb is my mole fraction of the non-volatile solute. So, 
simply we can also say that delta p divided by the vapor pressure of pure solvent is directly proportional to the mole fraction of the solute present in the solution now the question that came to our mind was why complicate things now we know that mole fraction is the number of moles of component a divided by the total number of moles in solution this is equals to delta p divided by the vapor pressure of the pure solvent number of moles again is related to the weight divided by molar mass weight divided by molar mass plus weight divided by the molar mass where we have used the small letters for the solute and capital for the solvent if you notice over here we are using the concept of molar mass over here when we are expressing the number of moles so if we know the weight of the solvent that is what we start off with initially the molar mass of the solvent the weight of the non volatile solute that we are adding to this solvent we can easily decipher the molar mass of the solute in the solution hence this is a very simple way of determining the molar mass of non volatile solutes in chemistry such type of properties which depend on the number of particles which are in solution so if you notice over here relative lowering of vapor pressure depends upon the number of moles of the solute of the non volatile solute in the solution such type of properties are what are termed as colligative property a property which depends not on the nature of the solute but on the number of solute particles number of non volatile solute particles in the solution but they do are get affected by the nature of the solvent our solvent is volatile solvent over here whereas our solute is a non volatile solute a reinforcement of this particular concept will only happen once when you revise it and secondly is you at least attempt five numericals based on this concept in order to understand this concept thoroughly for a write up on this concept please visit the site learning chemistry is fun on google or click the link that is provided with this video you will get a write up a complete explanation which you can refer to later on as well supposing the net connectivity is poor or you do not have access to internet at any point of time do let me know your feedback and subscribe to more videos on the same